We have just a couple more things to talk about, some important definitions, and we'll work with these in the future, so I'm not going to uh, do a lot with them here. We're going to define what's called the unit normal vector, n, and that's a vector quantity, so that should look like bold faces, hard to tell here. So this unit normal vector n is defined as the unit tangent, the derivative of the unit tangent vector with respect to t, you could think of that as dt dt, divided by the length of t prime. So it's definitely a unit vector because we're taking this vector t prime and dividing by its own length. Here's the really important thing about this unit normal vector. It's called the unit normal vector because it's always orthogonal to the curve at each point. And when I say orthogonal to the curve, I mean orthogonal to the tangent vector at each point of the curve. In other words, n at each point, at each value of the parameter t is always orthogonal to t of t. Why is that? Well, that's a very simple thing. It comes from the fact that this unit tangent vector is a unit vector. So if I take the dot product of the unit tangent vector with itself, that we get the square of its length, which is just one because it's a unit vector. And then here's the neat thing about the dot product and a similar formula works for the cross product as well. Because the dot product is in each coordinate product-like, if we want to differentiate with respect to t, t dot t, we can use a vector version of the product rule, that's the derivative with respect to the parameter t, and what we get is the derivative of the first one, t prime of t, dotted with the second one, plus the first one, t of t, dotted with the derivative of the second one. In other words, we get exactly twice t prime of t dotted with t of t. Well, that's great, except t dot t is this constant 1, so the derivative of the right side is 0. So the derivative of the left side must be the same as the derivative of the right side. This will have to be 0, and that tells us that t prime of t dot t of t is 0. So that t prime of t really is orthogonal to t of t, and the unit normal vector defined like this is just a scalar multiple of t prime of t, so it will also be orthogonal to the tangent vector. What does that mean? Well, this would apply in either two or three-dimensional space. I'll draw it as if we're in three-dimensional space because we'll want that later. If you have a curve, you're just moving around the curve At every point along the curve, we have these unit tangent vectors. Those are just unit vectors in the direction of motion. And then we'll always have an orthogonal vector here. This will be t at this particular point, and this will be n. n will be always be orthogonal to t, and that's what orthogonal we say to the curve itself. Orthogonal to the tangent vector will mean orthogonal to the curve. And the direction of this unit normal vector will point in the direction, of course, in which t is changing, because it's defined by t prime of t. So if the curve is bending, in this case, to the right, n will be pointing to the right. So this curve is actually bending downwards to the right, so because n is pointing down to the right. Here you see the curve is bending this way. This vector in the opposite direction would also be orthogonal. In fact, there would be many vectors orthogonal in lots of different directions. But the unit normal vector points in the direction in which these, these unit tangent vectors are changing, so it will kind of point you to how the curve is changing. Here we'll have our unit tangent vector and our unit normal vector. One final definition, the binormal vector b is given by t cross n, and these are vector quantities. Now, this binormal vector is a unit vector. Why? Because t and n are unit vectors, and they're orthogonal. And what happens when you want the length of the cross product? Here, of course, we have to be in three-dimensional space. What happens when you talk about the length of the cross product of two vectors? 
if the two vectors are orthogonal, the length is just the product of the lengths of the individual vectors, which would be 1 times 1. So b has length 1. And b will always be in a direction orthogonal to both t and n. And the right you can use the right-hand rule to see what direction it's in. b won't be of much use to us now, but there are some times when analyzing the motion of an object in three-dimensional space when you might be interested. At a point along a curve, let's say the r of t denotes motion along the curve like this, at some point along, at any point along the curve, you have the unit tangent vector, which is a unit vector pointing in the direction of motion. You have the unit normal vector, which is orthogonal to that, pointing in the direction how the curve, how these unit tangent vectors are changing. And then we have this third vector, which I'll draw like this, orthogonal to both of the others. And here, actually, I do it the wrong direction here. Remember, the right-hand rule tells you the direction. So if we use the right-hand rule here, we'll see that uh, the unit, the binormal vector would be a vector that kind of is going, I'll draw like this, down in that direction, B, because it will be T cross N. And these three vectors will form a, uh, will be three mutually orthogonal vectors. And you can imagine moving along the curve at every point, you have these three vectors, T, N, and B, which rotate and move depending on the twists and turns of the curve. The general idea is that as we do more and more sophisticated things to understand the motion along a space curve, we want to understand how these vectors, T, B, and N, behave and how they interact.